Presbyterian Church of Tuscarora, New York. It's January now and we've had a great snowfall, but this story begins quite a while ago. It began some months ago when folks in our church noticed that there was some timbers that were split, trusses that were split in our upper portion of our church. They did a few things to kind of begin the process of helping that along, but it didn't seem to be enough. Finally, we had an independent engineer come and give us a report. This year, 1993, <coughs> this independent engineer condemned our church building, told us that our our church was sagging in in the middle, and if it wasn't reinforced with steel, that our church would fall in. And he discouraged any formal meetings in that place until after this work was completed. Well, this was a devastating blow to us in Tuscarora. We're a little country church. We're about 35 members on the rolls, but we have many members in spirit. So it began the journey of this miracle to determine what we were going to do to restore this church and to grant us access again. As I said, we weren't allowed to come in, and so we began to have worship services down at the United Church of Mount Morris, which is our sister church in this yoke. And we met there until the middle of November. We thought we might have to meet there longer. When we found out the bad news about our church building, we began to meet with contractors, and we got a variety of bids. Our prayer through this whole process was to be courageous and be creative. Well, our final bid that we decided upon was a bid of $73,542. We'll never forget that figure. It seemed like a million miles away from possibility in some respects, but then in other respects, hey, why not? Why not us? And so we voted to go ahead with that contractor's bid and proceed with any way we could. Being creative and courageous, we knew we could overcome. Well, we didn't have to be that uh, resourceful, I guess financially because we started being resourceful other ways. The call was issued to former members of the congregation, Dale and Denny Thompson, and uh, with their expertise in construction work, they said, we can do this ourselves. And so many minds came together to begin the journey of creating a miracle in Tuscarora, New York. The culmination of that was the restoration of this building to a point where it's stronger than it was when it was originally built in the 1830s. That's quite a big jump, but let me tell you a little bit about what happened. Plans were drawn up, the resourcefulness of the congregation was brought to bear, people who had expertise in engineering. People who knew a little bit about this and about that started bringing in their gifts. Others were contacted in the community to act as resource people. And many, many individuals offered their gifts and service to the Lord to this church to make it have life and to, to not only give it life, but to continue to have life for this community. You see, this Tuscarora church isn't just a Presbyterian church down here in Tuscarora, New York. It's a community. It belongs to the people who are Tuscarora and the people who feel a tug in their heart for Tuscarora, New York. And so offers for help, for resources, for steel to reinforce the building started coming in from a variety of individuals and a variety of companies. A bucket truck was offered to guide the process of putting steel in place. orchestration of humanity 
to bring things together, not only cause this building to be standing as it does today, but to keep everybody that was working here happy and well fed. That was the job of Gloria Hall. She took care of making sure that the workers were, were well fed. And there were some mighty fine meals provided in the side yard here or in the basement, depending on the day. It must have been for a whole month that preparation work was done here. Jack hammers were brought in and new foundations were poured. Cribbing was set in place and new pillars in the basement and a process of slowly jacking the building up somewhere between six and 10 inches into place to where it was before. And then after the jacking was done, then it was the process of putting steel in place. We had an interesting phenomena, though, along the way. We had more workers than we knew what to do with. And so somebody said, hey, let's not let these people go home and think we don't need them. And so plans were drawn up for this handicapped accessibility ramp and two local contractors, two young men, the Brickwood Boys, Guy and Kirk, offered their expertise to enable us to put this ramp on the side of our building second access door was put off to the side as well. And that was part of the requirements of the uh, engineer that we have a second access from our church building. Here comes the snow plow. We better quit. Language right, but what happened was we needed to reinforce the upper portion of the building with steel and, and bring it up into place. First they had to build catwalks up up in the uh, rafter area so that uh, nobody's foot would go through the ceiling and so that they could the work could be done up there by the people who volunteered their services. So that was happening. Well, as I said earlier, these new footers were being poured downstairs to reinforce the building and start jacking it up. Another footer was poured out and back the end for the steel beam to wrap on that was gonna support the infrastructure of steel in, in the uh, balcony area and in the uh, attic area of the church. On this footer, when there's no snow there, there's an inscription of the God Willing Construction Company, and that's what we call this mass of humanity and human resource that pulled together to make this miracle happen. Now, Jean Moffat could tell you all the particulars, but let me just tell you in, in a clergywoman's perspective what happened. You just see the support beam here out the back, and someday we're going to get Jean Moffat to encase that and put a cross, make a cross out of that when he's not too busy. What it's supporting are two steel structures that are kind of like an elongated triangle that one goes on either side of the trusses upstairs and it lifts up the building and holds it in place. On the other side, you can't, you can't see it because it's all encased in the walls of the foyer, is another piece of steel up top that holds it in place at that end. And what that's essentially done is reinforce the building to such a state that it's stronger at this point than it ever was. What it also does is encourage those people who uh, are afraid that the church is going to fall in on them to know that in this church it'll never fall in because we're reinforced with steel. So anybody can come through our doors and feel secure about being in the Tuscarora Church. Okay. The, the culmination of, of this miracle happened on uh, Veterans Day on November 11th when the crane came here to lift up the steel and the steel was delivered and all the work was in place and many people from Tuscarora, lots of kids were here to watch what was gonna happen. I think it was one of the most exciting events in the, in the recent history of Tuscarora, New York. To have all this activity, this hub of event happening around the church. There was a wonderful meal provided for the workers and a tent outside and and people came from far and wide to see this, this miracle in the making. On that day, workers came and, and slid the steel structures into place and 
bolted them down so that the church would be reinforced. And it didn't take long for things to get moving. In fact, that very Sunday, we were back in church and, and worshiping as we've always done in this church for well over 175 years. This is the story of a miracle, a miracle of the way God works in the hearts of people and calls them to respond by offering their gifts and God's service. And we feel truly blessed here in Tuscarora, New York because of the creativity and the courage, the offering of gifts, and the fellowship and the sense of community that has been built through this project and, and through the restoration and through the miracle that occurred here. These are the new posts that I was talking about when we were outside. These posts were set in and the cribbing around them, new footers were dug and, and poured here to support them and reinforce them. And these were used to actually jack the church back up into place. Not only were these, are these a new installation here um, in the basement of the church, but all the ceiling tile has been replaced as well as the lighting tile. And this cupboard was replaced as well in the work. The old one kind of had, had to be ripped out and uh, it didn't survive very well. And so this was put in place as well and is, is part of the restoration process. As we were sitting here for dinner, a couple weeks ago, somebody looked around and said, you know, if you had no idea what went on here, you'd think this was the way it always was. And, and that's really true because the great care was taken to make everything look as it always has been in the past and continue to have that warm, cozy feeling, this nice family gathering place for not only the Tuscarora Church family, but for many groups in our community as this is the only meeting hall in the Tuscarora area. And this is where folks gather for community meetings and for community clubs. As you can see, this side access door was, was put in place during the process of the restoration of our church building, and uh, we hadn't ever had a, a secondary access from the sanctuary, and not only does that put us up to code, but it also helps for anybody that might want to sneak out during a longer sermon to have a secondary access to escape from during the worship celebration. This is our little country church. We're really proud of our, our building, and I guess we're proud of it because it reflects the faithfulness of the people who really are this church family. Not very long ago, I probably would have had a hard time standing underneath this light fixture with these heels on and not having my head be cracked on it. We were uh, at least seven or eight inches lower at that time. And it wasn't the light fixture that was dragging the church down, although it, it must weigh well over a ton and it's probably worth nearly $40,000 and it is kind of one of the prideful pieces of this church building. But it just demonstrates how much the roof was sagging and how much trouble this building was really in at the time we needed to do the work to bring it back up to code and, and reinforce it so that it would continue to stand. Okay, talk about these. Well, here we are up in the attic of the church building. And as you can see, here's this amazing catwalk that was constructed to support the weight of the workers as they were up there, up here, I mean, uh, doing the work to bring the steel into place and 
provide the support that was necessary for the church building. These uh, two long pieces of steel, I'm sure they're a little difficult to see, um, are what was brought in to do the reinforcing of the church building. And uh, I don't know if you can really see how, uh, how incredible they are, but, but Lori can maybe get a, a shot of the angle of them. When you, when you uh, see the other parts of the tape, you'll be able to see the crane lifting up and you'll be able to get a better idea of the shape of them. It's hard, hard to get a sense of the magnitude of the size of these structures. Gene Moffat's here with us. Maybe he can give us a little bit of the detail of how long they are and maybe about how much they weigh. In length, they're 43 foot long total. They're made out of their 12 inch channel iron, their core 10, which is approximately 30% stronger than regular uh, carbide steel. They're uh, five and a half foot to the peak. They're made like a roof truss. In order for us to get this truss in, if Laura can picture on the here and uh, the roof was sagging so much we had to actually notch this this section out to get this truss in we took approximately uh this measurement here now is oh this we're up approximately seven and a half inches that's how far the roof line has gone up at this point these are all supported by an uh, inch and a quarter threaded rod there's a angles welded or bolted on each side of the, each one of these beams so that when we draw in three places here we actually draw the ceiling up and we push the roof up at the same time at the same time when we're doing that we have come along with cables here turnbuckle on each one so that when we jack up we tighten the turnbuckle and that pull is pulling the, the side of the building in so that we get a straight structure when we're done at this time, we're just about through with our jacking. We've gone to the point where we haven't done any damage to any of the walls or anything, so we're in the process of considering the stopping at the point where we're at and leaving everything right where it's at. Um, these beams, each one of them, weighed approximately 3,000 pounds. So when we brought them in from this end here, with the men we had, it was all man labor carrying it from here to the point to the end of the church. Once we got one beam in, then we're home free because we helped support the other beam with the other one. But until we got that first beam in, it was a little bit hairy up here. If we can now, we're going up to the bell tower. Can't we? <laughs> step around here and fall through this hole.
six and a half foot uh, diameter. I didn't uh, say anything in it. We'll take it once we get back.
check out the handicap ramp. <laughs> See how many points we can make here. <laughs> Better get that truck out of here. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did that one. Stephanie first ran over there. I got all of them. guys up there. I just don't see how it's going to go in there, but I guess it is. I know, I don't. They must have measured. I hope they did. I don't see how that front piece is going in when it's flat-sided. Well, we'll just get it on tape and see. <laughs> now along to something in the air, does it?
Just a second and I'll tell you. Yeah, they built the platforms first, like the first day. They made it solid all the way across so they could walk. Well, I haven't called her. I said, walking in my house, it looks like I'm...
I'm a dead battery. Yeah, I'm grateful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you got to take the pressure off her out there. Right, All right, she's going. That's it. We're. She's going. Oh, you're moving around now. Sorry. One, two, three. 
right there. Good. He's exactly flush with beam in there. Yes. Oh, yeah. A regular blue bowl. You already see the blue bowl squash? Stay there, I'll come down. I mean, I'll go around and take Well, this is our, our new ramp for, not just for handicapped folks, but for little folks that makes it easier for them to come to church and also for folks who just have a little difficulty a real statement about the awareness of the people down here in Tuscarora and their concern for social justice kinds of issues and just a statement about the way we feel about our church we want everyone to feel welcome to come into the Tuscarora church we want them to feel like they have a place here with this family of God and that we we want to make it accessible for them to be in our church building and to be a part of this church family I think uh, this new driveway too is a is another statement about the concern and about the just just the pride of the people of Tuscarora. Can't see it very well, but uh, we redone the driveway all around the church building and added a much needed parking lot, and that'll be a real godsend in the mud season in the March. In March, when we often park on the lawn and uh, have some real interesting experiences trying to get vehicles out of the lawn. I'm going to head you right back to this far corner of our property where this hewn wood cross sits and, and this little meditation bench. And again, this is another vision of the spirit of the people who are at the Tuscarora Church. This is our memorial garden. 
And the statement that we want to make is that we are concerned about people from the cradle to the grave here. And this is a place for uh, the, the interment of cremated remains. This garden is open to any person in the area who wishes to have their remains here. And the process is of just mixing them in with the soil and, and really getting in touch with our humanity again, our ashes to ashes, dust to dust, understanding and, and theology that, that we were made from the, from the ground, that we were made in God's image in that way, and, and to dust we shall return. And so this garden is a testimony to our ministry here to all people, and its openness, again, is another statement about the people who are this church. This church doesn't belong just to the Presbyterian Church USA, but it belongs to the people of God. And all who know God and, and are a part of God's family are invited to, to be buried out here in our garden, to worship with us on Sunday morning, to feast with us at our chicken barbecue, to celebrate with us through our projects, our, our Christmas in the Country Bazaar, or our rummage sales and bake sales. Just may, some of the many things that happen out of this little church keep talking about it as a little church, but we know through our own understanding of who we are, we're, we're a little church with a big heart. We know how to reach out and how to really minister and how to serve our Lord. It's been a real joy to walk you through this miracle story. I'm Stephanie Sauvé. I've been the pastor here at the Tuscarora Church for 10 years, and they're the greatest joy in my life. Sometimes one of my greatest frustrations but uh, they have really helped me to grow in my faith in Jesus Christ, and I know who my Savior is because of the way the people in this church serve. Thank you, and amen.